Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Apparently, my message of joy during this season, and that you can have it every single day, is catching the airwaves. I'm going to be on Iowa Catholic Radio later this morning and on Relevant Radio later this week on Thursday, talking about joy and the fact that you can have joy in any situation, any circumstance. Because if we just lean on Jesus and we rest on his promises and the fact that this is not where we belong, that this life is short, that we can be meritorious with our sacrifices and our fasting and the situations in our lives, it's a better test for us to trust the Lord and to continue this walk. We can look at death in the face and be joyful. Because when we're off this earth, praise God, praying to God, thanking God that we are all going to be with him, probably through a bout in purgatory. I'll take it. But knowing that heaven and beauty and bliss and peace and love and things beyond our wildest dreams await us. So we can choose to walk through this life in despair and worry and anxiety and fear. Or we can choose to trust Jesus, all of his promises, and know that we in a state of persecution and or in a state of despair or circumstances, maybe we're in that valley, got lots of bad things going on in our life. That's when We rise up and we say we have the joy of Jesus in our life and we accept everything because God is willing it to happen. So there must be good that's going to come out of it. We just sometimes can't see it. But that's not my topic today. I just wanted to say it obviously grabbed (laughs) some ears Because I don't know many people who don't want to be filled with the real joy of Jesus and God, especially in this season and during this (laughs) this week of joy. But let's go back to maybe someone in your life isn't talking to you about joy. Like sometimes we have to be our own counsel our counselors. Counsel is a gift. Counsel is honestly what many priests should have. I don't know how you can be a shepherd of your flock and not have the gift of counsel because you need to counsel your people in the ways of the Lord. Yesterday in confession, I'm going to share, I went with Anna to mass. She didn't make it to confession and adoration. But I think that was a God thing because I was all by myself. It was beautiful to sit with the Lord because I really needed to hear him. Why? Because I received zero counsel in confession. It's rare. I think on one hand, I can count those types of confessions where I go in, there's no conversation, there's no feedback, there's no suggestions, 
There's nothing but thank you for a good confession. Please say three Hail Marys and sit in silence for 15 minutes as your penance. Now pray your act of contrition. That's what I got. And I know some of you get that all the time because you have that priest at your parish. And for those that have that kind of situation, I would highly recommend you getting out of your parish and going to another church to get confession from another priest. I have had life-changing counsel in the confessional. I'm sure many of us have. But the real deal that I think God was facing me with, I don't know if that's not making any sense. I was face to face with myself. I think God wanted me to say, look, you don't need a priest to tell you what you want to hear or what you need to hear. You hear it from me every day. You are here because you hear it from me. This is God talking to me every day. You know what you need to do. And I don't know if you're out there in that state. Sometimes we need to hear it. Seriously, sometimes we need help. That's why I mentioned how awesome it is to have some spiritual companions on the journey, to have a faith coach, to have a spiritual director, someone who is there to love you and pray through this life with you and hopefully offer you some counsel that brings you back to Jesus. Remember when I said my ministry is so simple? I could just sit here and say, go to Jesus, find something more with God, have a blessed and inspired day, click. (laughs) I mean, that's pretty much what I could do. But we do like having some companionship on the road. We sometimes do feel like we need someone to tell us point blank what we need to do or to help us figure things out. I'm not saying that we got this on our own, all of our life problems and issues, but I am saying that most of us know what we must do. And to be honest, sometimes we look for other people to corroborate not doing what we must do. I told you before, when I went into confession, I was trying to get the priest to answer my question about marijuana. Because at the time, I was really getting into deliverance and I was realizing how much Satan hates moderation. And I thought, well, if I could just smoke this whenever or on occasion and not make it like a 24 by 7 thing, then then I have moderation and I'm beating the devil. And I went in and I talked to the priest about it and he asked me a bunch of questions and in the end he never gave me the answer because my deal with God was this. Yes, I have made many types of deals with God, stupid, 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 but I did say, hey Lord, I'll do whatever the priest tells me to do. (laughs) And God is so clever, so funny too, because the priest didn't tell me what to do. The priest asked me questions, I answered, and then he said, well, I think you know your answer. Now that's a good counsel. Because sometimes we need to sit face to face with ourselves and God Especially after confession, especially after we're sitting there and we are clean and we want to stay that way 
and we want God to change our heart. Saint Lucy, who, by the way, patron saint of the blind, we might all want to pray to her because I think sometimes we can be spiritually blind in our life and we don't want to see the truth of what some of the things that are going on in our life are doing to our souls. Oh my goodness, I have a call coming in. Hold on. Well, turns out my call for Iowa Catholic Radio was 40 minutes early. (laughs) I just finished my radio spot. I don't know where I left off, but I am going to say this, that we have to have some mirror moments with ourselves. It's the face-to-face, that true conversation to say, look, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Rationally, think about it. Look at yourself. We don't look at ourselves that much. And I'm talking physically in a mirror. But if you want to know truly what's going on in your life, ask someone who's close to you. They're going to be honest with you if you ask them to be and you say, I will not be upset if you're honest with me. It's time to realize that we have control of our own lives. Yes, we need God. But as you know, as St. Francis de Sales says, We have free will. And there's my alarm setting me up for my call that happened already. (laughs) Sorry. It's a crazy morning already. Where was I? We have to set ourselves up for success. We can control ourselves. As St. Francis de Sales says, God and Satan must cooperate with free will. You have the choice. Now, what are you going to do? And that choice may be a thousand times a day you have to make that choice. But as long as you realize that everything rests with you, And if you add God's grace, like I can do nothing without you, God. So yes, I'm going to choose you, but I'm also going to choose your grace because then I'm going to be successful. And I'm also going to choose your weapons because I'm going to deliver these spirits that are attacking me that want to bring me down. Big pause. I'm still here. (laughs) Don't worry. I want to give you all a little time to think. Because none of us do that often enough. We're always moving our mouth. Not really thinking. Okay. What a crazy podcast this morning. Sorry. (laughs) All over the map. But let's always remember that it's about our heart. And I think I had mentioned St. Lucy and the spiritual blindness. But there's one quote that I read of her this morning that I would like to leave us all with here. And then we'll have a brief prayer. Excuse me. Those whose hearts are pure pure, 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 are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Those whose hearts are pure are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Everything comes from the heart. So we're going to pray right now for Jesus to change ours. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, come Holy Spirit, come Mary, come Jesus, come Joseph, come God the Father, 
Guardian angel, all you holy angels and saints, please come around us now as we all pray together and invoke Jesus' name into our hearts, into our lives, into our souls, our minds, our bodies. Lord, please purify our hearts so that we can allow you to shine through us. Have us be little lights like St. Lucy. Help us pray to St. Lucy today and have our spiritual blindness pulled back. Lord, we need a mirror moment with you. Sometime today, please prompt everyone who is listening to walk to a mirror and talk to themselves with you out loud about what we all need in our lives to be more virtuous, to be more courageous, to be more holy, to be more pure, to be more faithful. Lord, I love you with all my heart. With all my heart. We all do. And we want to give you our heart. Because we need your purification, your sanctification, your transformation. And we need your truth, your counsel to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. I just snoozed it, didn't dismiss it. (laughs) No glasses on. Oh, people, I love you so much. Thanks for the crazy join today. It was a little bit wild. Pray today as I go through my mortifications. Haven't mentioned that. So yesterday, in case you didn't see my really, really fast video, I did a live YouTube live yesterday. I don't even think I mentioned my mortification. So I did not eat what I wanted to eat at lunch. So I had a salmon salad, which was nice, kind of flavorless, to be honest. I was kind of bummed out for $21. <laughs> it should not have been flavorless, but I digress. I did not have wine, and I could have. It was supposed to be a little birthday celebration because I was going to go home and work out. But when I got home, it was late. I just wanted to spend some time with my husband, and so I decided I wouldn't work out. And so instead... I didn't have dinner. So there, kind of a trade-off a little bit. And I had beer, <laughs> which I, this, I lived on beer when I was younger. I lived on beer. I could drink a 12-pack as a chick and not have a problem with it. Of course, I had the body to match it, <laughs> but, but I, could, I was a beer drinker. And then I got introduced to wine. And so last night, I'm not drinking wine. Remember, that was the thing that I said. If I run out, I'm not going to buy it until after Christmas. Haven't bought it. My husband bought some beer and I'm like, okay, I'll have a couple beers. Holy moly. (laughs) I don't know about you, but you might as well just put one of those little Mentos candies inside a two liter bottle of soda and put the lid on. That's how bloated I was feeling with all that beer. Anyway, I think I did okay. I did a lot in terms of my soul, my spirit yesterday. So I went to mass and confession and adoration, as you know. (laughs) So those were my other kind of mortifications, but not denying myself something, but doing something that maybe I would have preferred not to do. Like I didn't expect to spend an hour and a half in adoration, but that's because they changed the confession times and it's not right before mass, but it was good. It was good to sit. I wasn't going anywhere. So it was all good. What are you guys doing? Share, put comments, 
If this is on YouTube, put comments in there, like it, subscribe. And I'm going to come with a much longer video today. And I'm also going to try and get back into the St. Francis de Sales, The Art of Loving God book, so I can bring some more of those gems to you. But I do have some other things that I have to focus on for other people's ministries, believe it or not. That's what I do in my faith coaching as well, is help others on their journey to get their ministry up and running or to promote some good thing that they're doing. So I'm working on a couple other people's stuff today. And I just want to throw out, we should, can we all pray for each other today? You know, like, Lord, everyone in the Find Something More community who are seeking you, who are seeking to find something more with you, God, please help everyone walking together. I think it's bizarre and awesome at the same time that, I mean, I know some of you out there, not super well, but enough, where there's times where I'm like, ah, so-and-so and so-and-so would be really good friends. <laughs> You know, and so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so would be good friends. I wish they lived closer together. We don't need to be in a physical proximity. We know that we can be in a digital family, so to speak. But just know that there are people out there who are struggling with exactly what you are. Exactly. Exactly. So we're not alone on this journey. We're just at different parts of the road. Okay, now I'm at 20 minutes. I look down at 15 and I'm like, ooh, I can make it kind of short. <laughs> Not. Alrighty, everyone. As always, love you, love you, love you. Find something more with God today. Call out to St. Lucy. Have her pray for intercession of your spiritual blindness or even physical blindness if you got some needs there. I know I do. Okay, have a blessed and inspired day.